Hi everyone, it's Justin. I've got another deck profile for you today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about how to build a nebula deck. And then afterwards I'm going to talk about talk to you about how you beat a nebula deck. And um, I'll just, uh, before I'm going to run through the cards first, but um, I'll just give you a hint that it all kind of hinges on turn four. So here we have Nebula from the Black Order expansion for Versus. And she's a, at level one. She has zero attack, three defense, and five health. Her keyword power is Thanos' greatest creation. Nebula is passive, and she loses and can't gain other keyword or superpowers. So you can see that uh, she is not a very powerful character. Um, she's got a powerful appearance, but uh, her attack value is zero, which means she can't even strike back. So you can't use strike back effects or anything like that and she has a pretty low defense, and uh, not particularly high health either. And then she also has the keyword power, Vengeance Stirs. So for one XP, you level up. At the end of an enemy turn, if Nebula is equipped with a one-of-a-kind equipment, she gains an XP. So it doesn't require her to have much XP, she just needs one, but it's a, it's a tricky level up condition, and so that's what this video is about, is taking advantage of that and um, figuring out how to do that as quickly as possible. So with that aside, before we look at her level up card, her level two card, um, let's take a look at some of the equipment that she can use. So in order for her to level up, it must be a one of a kind equipment, and there aren't too many of those in the game. And the number that you can use to actually level her up before she gets KO'd is even smaller. So we'll take a look at what there is. This is the nullifier. If you're a, a veteran versus player, you know what this is. One of a kind, ultimate nullification. When the nullifier appears, name a keyword or superpower. Enemy characters lose and can't gain that power until the nullifier leaves play. I have to say, this card, uh, by the way, this is a proxy that I made because I've got my real nullifier in another deck, but the this this one is probably the equipment that you want to go for for Nebula uh, out of all of them. This one is definitely going to help you because it has that ability so that you can cause your opponent to lose critical keyword powers like, say, flight or um, other things that might make it easy for them to get at your nebula when she's most vulnerable, which is all the time until she levels up. So Nullifier is, is, a, is a very useful card to get. So most of the time you want to be searching for that card, but there are a few others that, that could work. Next one is the Cosmic Cube. You'll note this is a Hydra equipment. So uh, Nebula is a villain. You'll need some Hydra characters in your deck if you're going to use the Cosmic Cube, which is another reason why the Nullifier is good because it can be played without any team affiliation. It's just got the Marvel stamp. And Nebula is, of course, Marvel. So the Cosmic Cube, one of a kind again, reshape existence for a skill, look through an enemy player's deck and choose a card, remove any number of cards with that name in their deck from the game. It's a great power, but it's not going to help you protect Nebula at all. So you can, you can already see that the Nullifier is going to give you a distinct advantage over the Cosmic Cube. And then I have a level 3 Cosmic Cube, again Hydra, one of a kind, Reshape the mind. Look at an enemy player's hand and choose a card. Remove all cards with that name in their hand from the game. So this one could be interesting, could, could be useful. You can, uh, you can remove, uh, again, critical cards that will potentially help your opponent stun your nebula. But uh, I have to say, at three costs, it's already almost too expensive to be used at this point you'll, again, start to see more of that as this deck evolves. Next we have the Darkhold, one of a kind. It costs three as well, so um, it, it's going to be real risky to try to use this one. Uh, Malevolent, equip only to an evil character. Nebula is evil, so that's fine. Dark Magic, when you play your first plot twist each turn, put it into your hand instead of your KO pile. Now this can definitely be useful if you can get it out there because uh, if you play enough plot twists then you can kind of double them up and that will help protect 
Nebula by adding defense, because she has a very low defense. So if you play something like Find Cover to give her plus three defense, she'll get up to six. If she has the Dark Hold, you can then put that plot twist back into your hand and play it again, and then she'll have nine defense. And so that will definitely help you uh, to, to get your Nebula leveled up and to help protect her from getting KO'd, or from getting stunned rather, and then um, losing the equipment and thus losing the XP. So you can see the Dark Hold is also gonna edge out the Cosmic Cube um, because it can be very useful when, you, when it comes down to the wire. And after that, we have a level four Cosmic Cube, which if you are equipping this to her on turn four and you don't have a good strategy, then you, you've basically just lost the game. She has such low defense that you're gonna take wounds early on, and if you're only attempting this by turn four, the only thing you can put out is your Cosmic Cube, because it's gonna take out all your resources, take up all your resource points. So uh, it's a Hail Mary, but you basically don't want it. I'm actually thinking about replacing this in, um, in my deck with something else, but I haven't, I haven't thought through what that is gonna be yet. So if you can um, hold on to one of these, by the end of an enemy turn, the Nebula will level up into her level 2, and she goes from a 0-3 to a 12-12, so you can see that she's got pretty massive stats. She has range, so you can keep her in the back row, and she has revenge. Thanos characters are passive and they lose and can't gain other printed keywords and superpowers. So in most decks, eh, it's not going to be that useful. But if you happen to be playing against Thanos, then uh, this will definitely help seal that deal. And then her uh, superpower is called Tomorrow is Mine to Sculpt. Choose a printed keyword or superpower on a character on a side or in a KO pile. Nebula gains that power. So that's really awesome. And that costs a, an alien uh, location, so a space location. I mean, you can get any number of things. You can change the game any number of ways. And you can also change it, you can take your opponent's superpowers and kind of use them against her. When I played this the, the first time, well, the first and only time, uh, I managed to choose uh, X-23's healing power. So I could just, for a might, I could just heal all wounds. And uh, that was pretty good because she was down to, down to one wound. And all of a sudden she was back to full health and she was 12-12 by turn four. So that was pretty good. I was able to, to wreak havoc after that. And the more space locations, the more alien locations you play, then the more superpowers she gains. So I gave, ended up giving her shrink and, and uh, regeneration. So she was, she was definitely a tough cookie to crack and, and ended up winning the game for me. So I, I felt very victorious with that. So that's kind of how Nebula works. Next, I will start to get into the cards. So for my level ones, I have, or my one cost characters rather, I have an Outrider. They have Legion and Swarm, and they're genetically engineered. When this character appears, choose one of the following for, to get this turn. Flight range, uh, plus two attack, or plus two defense. In my playing, as far as like helping Nebula level up, it doesn't really matter what you choose because it only lasts till the end of your turn. So if you choose flight and try to block with flight, you're going to lose it anyway. So basically, to your opponent, this is a 2-2 supporting character, and that's that. And since they have Legion and Swarm, I have five of those in this deck because I want lots of level 1 characters, and you'll see why when I get into the strategy. In my other deck, I had 12 one-cost characters, and in this one, I think I have more, even more than that. I also have Crossbones. He is a 1-1 one, one with range, henchman. This is cool. When a villain supporting character appears on your side, put a plus one, plus one counter on Crossbones. So uh, every time I drop an Outrider, then Crossbones gains uh, attack and defense. And then Combat Master is a really cool keyword power. While Crossbones is in combat, enemy players can't play plot twists. And I have 
some Hydra one cost, so I can use those com cosmic cubes. Four black ants with the uh, classic shrink power. If you watched my first video, it was all about shrinkers. When black ant gets attacked the first time each turn, you may cancel the combat. He also has two health, which is incredibly useful. And a uh, life model decoy, which is less useful, but you know, it could come in handy. Put three plus one plus one counters on black ant for each black ant supporting character in your KO pile. And actually, I don't think I can use that power with this deck because I don't have any mites in my deck, any Hydra mites in particular. But shrink is the big thing, and two health is also uh, another very important part of Black Ant and the important part of this deck. And then I also have, again, if I need to use a Cosmic Cube, I have the Hydra Soldier. They have Swarm, just like the Outrider, so you can have any number of this character on your side. This power can't be turned off. And then Soldier, when this character appears, put minus one, minus one counters equal to the number of soldiers on your side onto an enemy supporting character. So that can be useful. I've got four of those in my deck. So those are all the one cost characters. And here is why I have that many. There's 15 one cost characters, which is kind of incredible because uh, usually you want high cost characters. And in this case, it, you swarm them with low cost characters. Whoops, it's not supposed to be in there yet. So the reason why there are so many of these is because, again, it's critical on turn four that that is when you want to make your move. That is how you're going to win with Nebula. Because you have to, again, protect her until the end of your opponent's turn. So you have to do everything you can to make sure that your opponent doesn't stun Nebula and then she loses that one-of-a-kind equipment. If, if they manage to do that once, it's pretty much game over for you. Uh, you might be able to recover, but th it's not very likely at that point. Because you're going to spend the first four turns getting your butt kicked, because you only have three defense, and you're not going to have people out, because you, you don't want to waste them. You want to make sure that your hand is full of one-cost characters, at least two one-cost characters by the time you hit turn four. Because you want to put those one-cost characters out in front of Nebula. So you want to have your Hydra soldiers protecting Nebula so that they have to go through your Hydra soldiers before they can get to Nebula. Or you want to have a Hydra soldier and Black Ant out because then Black Ant can shrink, that wastes an attack, then Black Ant gets stunned, and then they take out your, your, your Hydra soldier, and then there's no one left to attack Nebula, and then you've leveled up. Or you want to have, um, I mean, Outriders are the same, same kind of deal. Soldiers are nice because they put counters on, minus one, minus one counters on your enemy. So if you put out two Hydra soldiers on one turn, then that's three minus one, minus one counters on, on uh, an enemy character. And maybe that'll be enough to stun them. Maybe it'll be enough that they can't get through to Nebula's defense. Um, those are the kinds of useful things that you want to be looking for in the one-cost characters that you're putting into your deck. By the way, um, Black Ant is blue just because I pulled him out of my shrink deck, um, but I would normally re-sleeve him brown like the rest of my Hydra, or the rest of my villains deck. Um, just FYI. So that's kind of where, where you're at. If you get the Nullifier out and you attach to Nebula and you get Black Ant out, and say an Outrider, then you're in a pretty good spot because on by turn four they have to be able to attack you one, two, three, four times in order to actually stun you. And so you definitely want to make sure you have those one cost characters in your hand so that way you can put them out. You've got two costs for the Nullifier and then two costs for your for your both your one cost characters. And that's going to be your, your best bet. When I played, I had so many one-cost characters in my hand that I actually managed to um, put out two Hydra soldiers on turn three. And whether or not they survived turn three didn't matter as much because I wanted to put those three counters on someone. And I wanted to make sure that I stunned one of my opponent's characters. That way they would have one less person to attack me. 
Again, those are the things that you're trying to think about. Like, how do you put your opponent at a disadvantage enough on the turn that you bring out your equipment so that you can, so that that equipment can survive? Another way you can do that is with Black Dwarf, who you could bring him out, you could bring the Nullifier out and Black Dwarf out on turn four if you have to. That would be your four resource points. Uh, it's not going to be as good as Black Ant and another one cost, but because Black Dwarf has tough, then when he gets stunned, you may recover him, and so he, you basically have to attack him twice in order to get through, uh, in order to get through him and get to your nebula. So if you're on the ropes, then Black Dwarf could definitely come in handy. He also has the power, when he appears, reveal the top six cards from your deck, put a one-of-a-kind equipment from among them into your hand and shuffle the rest of the revealed cards into your deck. So you could bring him out on, say, turn three, if, if you don't have the nullifier in hand or if you don't have some, way, some other way to get at the nullifier, and his black order power will hopefully help you out there. If you bring him out on turn three and he gets stunned, you could optionally not use his tough power and you could stun him and maybe Nebula will get stunned again, but then you can bring him back and he could be he could be a protection so then you could bring out you know a few more characters and now you they have to do four attacks to get through to you now so turn three is isn't going to be an important turn and turn four is going to be the where it all hinges so i have four black dwarfs in my deck here's the other three at cost two if you don't manage to succeed on turn four you're probably doomed but i did put uh, three cost Dr. Octopus in there because uh, he's a villain he matches the theme and he has grab while he's in the front row enemy characters can't fly over him he's a decently high defense for a three cost character and so it will protect Nebula from flyers and will will um, maybe cause them to team attack and exhaust a couple of their characters to get through him um, so Dr. Octopus there's only two of them two of him in there I may swap him out for someone else, um, but he can he's, he's a decent card overall from the old set. And then I don't have any four cost characters and I only have two five cost characters because I filled my deck up with so many one cost characters and I want some higher cost characters later on down the line. So in the middle is where I'm trying to even that out. So I grabbed Corvus Glaive. Again, this is sort of a, a Hail Mary. If you are waiting until turn five to level Nebula up, again, you're probably already dead by then. But just in case, he has Black Order again, so you can search, you, know, you can reveal cards and hopefully get that Nullifier or another one-of-a-kind equipment. And he's ferocious. While in melee combat, Corvus Glaive strikes, with char strikes before characters without ferocious. Sort of like tough, except he doesn't get stunned, I guess, is one weird way to think about it. But... He has a very high attack, so he is, will likely take out a lot of lower cost characters before they can even strike back at him because he has Ferocious. And then we're just getting into the higher cost characters. At this point, they're not necessarily protecting Nebula from for holding on to her equipment, although, you know, if possible, that would be great. So I have Magneto. Again, it's a, it's a proxy. Flight and range, seven attack, six defense and magnetic suppression enemy supporting characters can't remain can't recover they remain stunned which is really annoying when you're playing against magneto and so i decided to throw him in there again he's a villain so that works with the, the deck theme and uh, i have four of those in there and then we get to turn seven seven cost Dormammu, Immortal. When he gets KO'd, you may shuffle him into your deck. And Necromancy, for an intellect and an energy, put a character from an enemy player's KO pile onto your side. Uh, could be useful, but mostly he's just in there because he's the villain's seven cost. And uh, he's got two health. He's not super great. You could probably swap him out for someone else. Um, but I'm just trying to keep it villains themed at this point. And then two, oh, so I have two Dormammus and then two Red Skulls, uh, getting that, getting a high cost Hydra character out there. A diabolical plan for an intellect 
Enemy players can't draw cards until your next turn. He has 10 attack, 6 defense, and range. Um, a diabolical plan is actually pretty diabolical. And I have the intellects in here, and they, I may or may not be using them, so uh, it's great to do that late game and take away your opponent's options. So two Red Skulls, and of course, Gilgamesh. Uh, he's the one who breaks the theme of Hydra and villains, but he's just too good to to keep out of it. Eternal, if Gilgamesh would leave play, you may put him into his owner's hand instead. And the Forgotten One, at the end of your turn, if you didn't say Gilgamesh this turn, he loses and can't gain Eternal. So just gotta keep saying Gilgamesh. And then of course Flight and 16 attack, 16 defense, and one health. He's just uh, a powerhouse. And that is all of the characters. That's, that's the curve of this deck. If we look at the locations, of course we've got four vaults, which are the villains' locations. We've got four academies, so we can use a diabolical plan and uh, another card that's coming up. And we've got four beautiful space proxies here to use Nebula's level up power, which is that tomorrow is mine to sculpt. So those space locations, you can't use the vault. It's not, it's not a true wild. Uh, you can't use the vault to create space icons or uh, alien icons. So we need all four sp spaces so that we can use those alien powers so that we can give Nebula all of the healing that she needs. And the last batch is four Wakandas. So again, we're looking for very specific cards. We're looking for specific equipment cards. So Wakanda allows you to use Vibranium technology. During your build phase, your main character may pay an intellect. If it does, turn this location face down, then search your deck for an equipment, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So if you want that nullifier, there's a no better guarantee than Wakanda. And of course, that's why we have the four academies as well, because those give you intellects, uh, which Wakanda needs. That's how those locations work. There's lots of ways to get the cards that you need. One is just by drawing cards, of course. Another one is using the Black Order that Black Dwarf and others use to allow you to search your deck for those, or um, flip over the top six cards. But then Wakanda is very good for getting exactly the card that you want. So that one is in there. Although I lucked out the first time I played this and I got the Nullifier precisely when I needed it. And so unfortunately that sort of meant that Wakanda kind of went unused. And so it was a little bit, it was a little bit fat and fatty in the deck. Then we get onto the plot twists. Again, we got to protect Nebula on turn four. So whatever you do, do not play any defensive plot twists before Nebula has that equipment in her hand. Because if you do, you're just wasting them. If you have the um, the Darkhold, then you can play those plot twists twice. Well, you can play the first one twice, which is going to be really awesome. And if you have the Nullifier, then you have a two-cost equipment that will allow you to bring out two one-cost characters, which is also going to be awesome. So, so these are probably the two that you will be looking for the most. You're gonna have a harder time with Cosmic Cubes, but um, it's still possible that you can do it. So the plot twists that I got are Find Cover, and uh, this is a proxy that I made because, again, I need more of them, so I just printed some out. Any turn combat, choose a defender to get plus three defense this combat. If I can play one of those and get plus three defense, that's gonna force my opponent to do something. And if I have the Dark Hold and I can play it twice, and that's awesome. And if I have two fine covers, I can play one twice and then play the other one, and um, that would be awesome too. And then likewise, I have Shock to the System, which is any turn combat, choose an attacker to get minus three, minus zero this combat. Again, think about if you have the Dark Hold, think about which one you want to be able to play twice, because it's the first plot twist you play each turn. So if you're up against someone who has so if you look at Nebula, and you're up against someone who has three attack to get through her three defense, and you play Shock to the System while she's holding the Dark Hold, 
then their attack goes down to zero, and that goes back into your hand. I don't know what I'm saying, but basically you might want to be able to increase the defense uh, higher instead of lowering the attack. They're, they're more or less the same thing, but sometimes you got to think about, like, can they strike you, or can you go below zero if you play this twice, that kind of thing. So that is the, the deck. So again, building a successful Nebula deck is going to hinge on turn four because you want to, that's going to give you the most opportunities to play one cost characters, especially Black Ant. You might want Wasp in there if you want to protect with flight. Um, that's definitely another viable one that you'd want in there. I didn't put her in just because she's a force and it kind of breaks the, the theme of the deck. And I wanted more Hydra characters because um, I want to be able to play those Cosmic Cubes. So as ever with these games, it's always a balance of, of what it is you need and what's in your deck and, and all that kind of thing. The, the weakness of this deck is, of course, if your opponent knows that it's hinging on turn four, then they're going to also keep their hand protected pretty well. They're going to keep their most offensive cards in their hand and they're going to build up their board so that, that way they can get through your board by the time you build it on turn four. So that's, that's, how you, that's how you defeat a Nebula deck, is basically by playing her strength, or her weakness, I guess, against her. So yeah, you want to hold on to offensive plot twists and things that will let you attack again a second time, all that kind of good stuff, because you want to make sure you don't want Nebula to level up. You got to make sure that you stun her when she has that equipment. With the release of the Utopia Battles, there is one card in particular that I think is going to be incredibly useful for this deck, and that is Dark Beast. He has a power, Dark Scientist, you pay two less to play evil equipment to a minimum of one. He can definitely be useful, but again, it's all it's all in the, the resource points that you have. He could make a uh, nullifier cost one instead of two, but Dark Beast himself is going to cost two as well. So you got to make sure that you have the resources. You could bring him out on turn two and then bring do, do your move with the nullifier on turn three, but you have to make sure that Dark Beast stays out. So that might mean protecting him with your nebula or something like that. He is definitely an interesting addition to the cards but I don't know quite how well he fits in with a Nebula deck. And it's similarly, um, he's he's got the Hammer affiliation, and so he's going to be off theme. And so, you know, it might not be worth it to have him in your deck after all. But definitely worth looking at. I think he's going to be a fun one to try to work in there. That is where I'm going to leave it. That is how you build and beat a Nebula deck. And uh, I hope you guys give it a shot. I hope you uh, send some, some comments my way if you think there, there are different ways you can, you can trim the fat. Maybe I don't need four Wakandas. Um, maybe I don't need the four cost Cosmic Cube. Maybe I, I could put in some more supporting characters if I, if I got rid of those. Maybe I don't need quite so many one cost characters. Either way, let me know either in the comments or on the Facebook group. And otherwise, uh, happy playing.